multiple videos are exceptionally good on this channel. I am saying this because if you are preparing for an interview or even if you are a student, these videos will give you the exact structure of preparation you need to follow during your masters or bachelors. So you should definitely watch these videos to prepare for interview. You will get a clear idea about how to plan out things in whatever remaining time you have for preparation. So even if you are preparing for X company, watch videos from other companies as well and prepare notes about important topics to cover, important resources to be used and plan out things accordingly. Hello everyone, I'm Srinivasan. I'm currently doing my master's in communication engineering at Bits Pilani. And today I would like to talk about my interview experience with Qualcomm. So Qualcomm had come to our campus for on-campus placements and they had come for two different roles, hardware and software role. So all communication related roles were under software. So I had opted for that. So basically the interview process had four stages. First was a CGPA a shortlisting. Second was a written round. Third was a technical round. Finally followed by an HR round. So first, uh, the CGPA criteria which was followed this time was all, all students who had greater than seven CGPA were eligible for the placement, uh, for attending the placements. Then uh, next coming to the written round. So the written round, there were two sections. So uh, there were uh, three sections actually. The first was an aptitude section, second a coding, and third was a technical section. So for the technical section, we had to choose before the examination whether we were going to sit for digital or VLSI related questions or a communication questions. And I had opted for communication questions. So coming to first the aptitude section, the aptitude was a pretty standard aptitude test. There were uh, questions which are related to puzzle solving, coding, decoding, data interpretation, logic reasoning, the usual uh, set of questions. The questions were easy to moderate. The only uh, caveat here is there were some questions related to data interpretation, which did take some time. So some time management issues were, have, were uh, there, but yeah, if, we managed, if time could be managed properly, then the paper, the aptitude section wasn't that hard. So more practice was required in this aspect. Next, coming to the coding section. In the coding, the questions were primarily based on C coding. The, the questions were some of them were like finding out the output of code or finding the errors in a given code or uh, some basic uh, questions related to C fundamentals and some data structures like linked list stack uh, arrays and just some basic questions on that. In addition to that, this time, there were also a couple of questions with regards to OS, especially with regards to scheduling. Some questions regarding some scheduling algorithms and the kind of scheduling algorithm and the outputs regarding that. So, so a few questions were there in regards to that in the coding section. Finally, coming to the technical section, in the technical section, since I had opted for communication questions, I was only uh, allowed to uh, attend questions which are of, uh, under the communication domain. So the questions in this were pretty much uh, basic digital communication, which was like uh, you, um, bachelor's level and a uh, gate level, and a little bit of wireless communication, uh, basics of uh, advanced digital communication kind of questions were there. So for uh, this, the questions were uh, the basic questions regarding the sampling quantization, then some A to D conversion, then modulation, a question, few questions in modulation, I think. And then maybe some questions on information theory also that was also there. In addition to that, there were also questions with regards to signals and systems, a few, a uh, couple of questions regarding filter design, the kind of filters, the stability of the filters. So there were a few questions on signal systems, a DSP and uh, basic digital communication. That was how the technical, that is the basic makeup of the written test. So coming to the strategy which I used for preparing for the written exam. So first coming to the aptitude section, since the aptitude was pretty general related to the like gate level and other competitive exams, I didn't focus too much into it, but I still solved some questions by using some online resources, a couple of them which I used for like uh, some, I looked up on some puzzles related in Geeks or Geeks. And then I also went to some coding decoding questions on pace prep, but otherwise uh, I didn't, uh, uh, put that much emphasis on the preparation for aptitude, but uh, especially for Qualcomm, I've noticed that the questions regarding data interpretation are uh, quite lengthy. So some good practice in that would be quite helpful. Next, coming to the coding round, since it was uh, we had been uh, informed that the questions would primarily be on OOPS and uh, C coding, I mainly revised these concepts using Geeks for Geeks and tutorials points, and uh, just some questions regarding that online finding out the errors of uh, code and different kinds of errors. Uh, what are compilation error, runtime errors, those kind of questions. I just had looked up on some online resources just to get a feel of it. And for communication, I just uh, basically revised my bachelor's notes and whatever I would, uh, the basic concepts which ever was done in my master's as well. Since the questions were based on that, I didn't have to prepare too much for the communication part.
modern wireless rf uh, uh, in a modern wireless system so that uh, i had to explain the entire chain on a top view level without getting into too much details once i explained the top view chain then they went into more details with regards to the lna block and the mixture mixture block so in the lna they asked some uh, some kind of uh, not tricky questions but questions which we had to think about so a uh, good understanding of the lna concepts and the design and why it had been designed for some parameters and where it can be used where it can't be used those kind of questions i had to answer then coming to the mixer stage mixer again the similar kind of questions they a couple of questions regarding the types of mixers which can be used in a, a receiver chain and where which is uh, useful and what is a uh, best use case for that and then on, on top of that they also asked something regarding uh, the problems associated with the different mixtures the uh, design of the local oscillators and how to synchronize the local oscillators so some questions regarding pll was also asked so uh, this was part of the rf chain and then finally they uh, had asked me a, a couple of questions regarding the analog to digital converter the uh, choices of uh, kind of analog digital converters what is the uh, parameters which should be considered for the design of it and some questions related to how the snr is impacted based on the type of adc so once these questions were answered that was the end of the rf interview then they moved on to the questions with uh, regarding to a uh, digital communication and wireless communication so in that they first started with uh, the different multiple access techniques in wire wireless communication under under the different technologies so i had to give a, a brief description of all the wireless uh, all the multiple access techniques used in the different wireless standards and compare and contrast and uh, tell how each one was an improvement over, over the previous one once i had done this then they uh, focused mainly on the fourth generation of cellular communication which is lte so under that they asked me to talk more about oftm so this topic of oftm is actually very important to be learned especially for any interviews regarding communication profile because almost every interviewer focuses on this and they do not uh, focus on the mathematical aspects of oftm rather a uh, uh, very intuitive understanding of it and how it is able to mitigate different problems which were uh, there which is which was noticed in previous uh, uh, techniques which were adopted and how oftm was uh, helping mitigate those so that is what i had to answer i had to compare this oftm and the oftm the multiple access technique with respect to previous multiple access technique standards and uh, explain and talk about how it is getting better and again uh, how it is uh, uh, giving better uh, kind of performance compared to previous ones and also uh, give a little bit about what are the problems associated with it and some how is it being handled in lte so once i finished this uh, they asked me a couple of questions regarding uh, modulation schemes especially like uh, compare and contrast between the phase shift king and uh, quam and where one should be used where the other should be used which is better with respect to like energy efficiency better to rate performance and those kind of questions once these questions were done they finally moved on to wireless communication so in wireless communication the similar thing as uh, they had asked regarding multiple access technique in oftma a couple of more questions they asked in oftma the questions regarding this uh, uh, the restrictions on the sub carriers and what is the what should be the kind of uh, uh, consideration which should be taken into account when deciding sub carrier spacing and what is the length what how should the cyclic prefix be selected and questions like that so they were more interested to see how i have uh, understood why different things are being done because a lot of this is given in standards but we had to uh, i had to explain my understanding of it and why i think it is uh, being done and what is the different uh, reasonings behind it so once this was done they finally moved on to questions regarding lte so this lte part uh, they didn't get into too much details of it they were more interested in the physical layer of lte but even in that they uh, questions which were asked were mainly focused on the kind of radio frames the different sub frames in it the slots questions regarding that and again the questions regarding a resource block resource element then again how oftm is being used in this and the oftm parameters which are used in lte so this knowledge although we don't need to get into too much detail at least uh, uh, a surface level understanding of it is required where we can at least give the facts which are given with respect to in the lte standard what what are the oftm uh, parameters which have been selected regarding sub carrier spacing the number of sub carriers the uh, cyclic prefix and etc so the, these are the questions which are which were asked with regards to lte so once i was done with the lte questions then they were satisfied with my communication questions and the, the rest of the interview proceeded with the coding round so the coding round initially i was asked some questions regarding uh, c questions and uh, finally the there was a, i had to um, uh, write a couple of codes using the hacker rank platform so the questions which were asked initially they started off with fundamentals in c questions regarding data types the uh, the types of storage classes then a couple of questions uh, regarding uh, the sizes of different data types in different architectures 
So since the profile was actually for a RF software engineer, they also expected me to have a little bit of expected a little of a little bit of knowledge with regards to the computers and microprocessors also. So a couple of questions were asked regarding the kind of computer architecture like Harvard versus von Neumann architecture and uh, what kind of architectures are better for which kind of purposes. Then. They also asked, like, uh, uh, depending on the kind of processor, whether it's a 32-bit processor, 64-bit processor, what is the size of different data types, like int, uh, and uh, which which kind of uh, size can be supported in what type of processor. And finally, they had asked a couple of questions regarding the kind of memory organization with respect to ND and NES. And uh, once I had answered this, the uh, after this uh, question is when the coding started. So it was basically a continuation of this question regarding ND and NES, where I had to give, write a program to show the kind of ND and NES in the system which uh, the this program was being run on so for so that was actually a little tricky because it involved a little bit of pointer knowledge and uh, I, but uh, the the interviewer was very helpful in that aspect that uh, they kept giving hints so the very important thing here is whatever code which is being written for any particular uh, questions which they ask we should constantly keep telling the kind of uh, approach which you're taking and giving a feedback to the interviewer because that way the interviewer can see if you're going in the right direction or not so if you are going in the right direction they will give you hints as to how you can make it better which is how which is how, what, what happened in my case so the interviewer gave me a couple of hints how to how i could write this program and that helped me to uh, write the program with regards to this. Then a couple of questions where uh, the interviewer had just written the code and asked me to give the output without running the code. So those were a couple of questions. And there were a couple of questions on array manipulations, like uh, finding out the missing element or finding out the, uh, like deleting all the duplicates which are creating an another new memory, those kind of questions. Uh, then, uh, uh, yeah, a couple of questions were also asked regarding signed and un unsigned integers and how they will uh, behave as uh, loop uh, counter variables. These were the questions which were asked in the coding round of my of, uh, in my first technical interview. Then coming to the second technical interview, this was entirely a coding interview. There were no questions asked regarding communication. So in this, they went into a little more advanced concepts regarding C with respect to uh, memory allocation and dynamic memory uh, allocation and the kind of memory management in C. So the, uh, the initially they started off with the basic questions similar to what were asked in the first round. Then they moved on to some questions regarding how the memory is organized in C, the virtual memory in C, how it, how, what is the difference between data segment stack uh, heap? How are they growing? How is the, what is the, kind of errors that you can encounter when uh, simultaneously trying to fill a stack in a heap and questions regarding segmentation fault, uh, then uh, what would happen if you try to access a null pointer, a dangling pointer, a couple of questions regarding these dynamic memory allocation and uh, also regarding pointer concepts. These were some of the theoretical questions. Then they moved on to again a couple of uh, uh, array based questions so an example of it was like given an array of some n natural integers if some element is missing we had to find out that particular missing element without doing any sorting operation and uh, then the extension of this was to do the same procedure for like two elements so these kind of a couple of array manipulation questions were asked final part of the interview was regarding uh, bitwise operators and uh, here they asked first they were asking questions i didn't ask me to write any quotes for it a couple of questions regarding swapping of elements or adding two elements uh, adding two numbers without using any arithmetic operators by using bitwise operators those were the questions asked and then finally there was some multiplication uh, there was a question regarding multiplication of an integer with a floating point number using bitwise operators and which i had to uh, demonstrate using a code and once this part was done the coding interview also was over so basically the duration of it if we could see the first interview was about 45 minutes to one hour and the second interview since it was only a coding interview it was only about 30 minutes so once this coding interview was done then there was an HR interview, which was taken, which was a telephonic interview. So an HR person from the company contacted me and just asked me a couple of uh, standard questions regarding uh, the company, just about myself and some HR related questions. This lasted about one to two minutes. And once this was done, the HR interview was completed. So coming to the preparation strategy, which I used, so uh, at Qualcomm, especially, the roles are uh, focused on uh, RF uh, engineers. So we had to focus on some RF related subjects, which included the RF microwave, which was taught as part of our course, as well as an, another elective which we had, which was regarding to RF microelectronics. So the best resources for this are at least what I used for our class notes, which are taught by our professor, uh, Professor Pankaj sir. And in along with that, I also refer to this textbook of uh, RF microelectronics by Bezal Rasavi. 
the first uh, two three chapters are uh, basically containing the fundamentals which are very important and more emphasis can be given on the fundamentals chapter which is the very first uh, second chapter and on lna and mixer because these are the uh, topics on which more questions can be asked then coming to after the rf part then the next more important thing is on digital communication so for digital communication again i mainly refer to my class notes by uh, professor sainath sir uh, he taught us advanced digital communication and all different modulation types on different receiver types all those topics are being covered in the course so the course slides and course notes were also very uh, were almost very useful and in addition to that uh, the textbook of john prokes is also uh, quite useful for uh, digital communication finally coming to the wireless communication which is also another uh, uh, area of interest and in which in which many questions can be asked so that again uh, the class notes by professor uh, sandeep joshi sir were, were very useful in addition to that the textbook of wireless communication by andrea goldsmith is also a good resource to learn many of the fundamentals regarding wireless communication because questions they don't always ask you to explain with facts or something they might even give you some situation based questions where you might have to apply some fundamental uh, concepts and try to solve it so the understanding fundamentals uh, for understanding that this question uh, book by andrea goldsmith is very useful so in addition to this while all these are uh, good resources for reading there's another uh, a main resource which can be used is basically the uh, lecture and peter lectures by professor aditya jagannathan sir on youtube it's an and peter lectures in which he has covered uh, basics of digital communication some estimation theory and uh, optimization also covered and wireless communication very in uh, the those lecture failures by this professor is actually a very intuitive way of teaching he not only explains it from a mathematical perspective or but also from an intuitive perspective so this kind of intuitive perspective is very useful when we have to explain it in an interview because interviewer is not looking for a mathematical justification but rather a uh, logical and an intuitive explanation so these were the main resources which i used for studying the technical subjects then coming to the uh, coding part again coding the primary focus was on fundamentals of c and uh, data structures which included like arrays tags linked lists uh, and queues it didn't go much beyond that so for my preparation i mainly referred to geeks for geeks and tutorials points for learning these concepts and in addition to that i also referred to the like uh, videos regarding uh, c and data structures by nareesh it youtube channel uh, and uh, those videos are also very useful so in addition to this while these uh, cover some of the uh, data structures and questions regarding that uh, some more focus should be given on understanding some fundamental things regarding memory management and how dynamic memory is like quest not just about the different functions which are there in c but uh, also how they are interacting with the hardware and how it is going to uh, impact the different how the different operations are going to impact because the uh, questions can also be asked in this that aspect in addition to just data structure so that uh, preparation can be done by using online resources itself like tutorials points and geeks for geeks but the little focus should also be given to that in addition to that from geek for geek there are some sections of puzzles so these puzzles are uh, also very useful to uh, preparation for aptitude and also it is possible that uh, sometimes interviewers might ask questions regarding puzzles and just ask you to solve some given some kind of uh, a situation try to solve it those will be mainly aptitude and logical questions but these kind of puzzles uh, thinking for algorithmic thinking for puzzles uh, so we can practice that by referring to geeks for geeks these are the main resources which i had used for my uh, placement preparation in addition to all these resources which i had used for the preparation of the technical part and for the coding part i'd also made a refer to the videos by our seniors and their their uh, uh, interview experience which was shared by uh, planet skills channel on youtube which was very useful to us because they gave us a first hand experience of how uh, they had uh, faced the interviews and what kind of uh, situations they were uh, um, they had to be they had to encounter and the kind of questions which they were asked and they gave us a very curated way of uh, 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 preparation with respect to that for the quite kind of questions which they may ask in interviews not just a technical aspect how to answer it and what is the best resource to prepare for that so this uh, these videos by which were uh, available on the planet skills uh, channel were very useful in the placement preparation 